Hey guys, Taria here from UrbanSketchingWorld.com. In today's video, we are going to take a look at quite an easy wet and wet kind of technique. I've done a video on this before. I'll show it here on the screen so you know which one I'm talking about. So it's kind of this, but adding another little bit to it. So we're going to use the wet and wet technique for the foreground element, let it dry, and use the wet and wet technique in the background element as well. Um, and then we're going to draw on top of the foreground element and like really make it pop and try and create that kind of sense of depth in the sketch. So I hope you guys are really going to enjoy this one. It's one that you can um, try out in your own sketchbook and have a lot of fun with. If you want to try this particular uh, sketch, this particular um, photo, you can find it over on my Patreon page. Don't worry, you don't need to join up or anything, pay any money, it's there, available for everyone. But you just need to head over there in order to download it. Um, and I just want to give out a huge, huge thank you and big shout out to my Patreon, Simona. She's awesome. And yeah, let's get on with the video. So I am using a Hanamula watercolour sketchbook for this. And I just showed you my new purchase, which is a Faber-Castell collapsible water cup, which I'm loving right now. A very inexpensive item, but super useful. And I'm pretty much just going to use my Rosemary and Co dagger brush for this. This is the half inch one, and um, see where see where life takes us. So this is a photograph of a scene I took at the famous landmark of Chichen, Chichen Itza. It's probably the most well known sort of Mayan pyramids in Mexico, at least if not potentially the world, maybe. Um, if you have my book, Sketchy Adventures Around the World, you will you will have seen some of the sketches I did when I visited the area. This was one of the scenes that I did sketch, and this is in my book, but today I am doing it differently because I just felt, I saw the photograph and I was like, this is going to lend itself really nicely to this technique. So I've zoomed, you'll see I've zoomed into just one detail of the pyramids, um, this kind of cool aztec -y, Mayan-y, dragon-faced thing. And I just want to show you here how you can paint the shape of this foreground element in a loose, wet and wet way, but how you can also do that with the background too, however still making this foreground element the kind of focus. So here I'm just doing a yeah wet and wet technique. I'm using some sort of yellow ochres, a bit of quinadricone rose, a little bit of Payne's grey, trying to keep it fairly pale not too vibrant just to not overpower anything and just letting them mix on the page so you are going to see here that my paper has started to curl up a bit and that's just because i've used quite a lot of water on this paper but it's not really a problem it is kind of pooling at the edge there but you know it's not something i'm going to worry about something i do love about this cup by the way is that it has undulating uh, rim so you can just put your paintbrush on top like that it doesn't roll off the table so it's great. It's only a couple of quid this cup, but it's uh, I'm already really enjoying it. Anyway, so you can see here that this is like the best thing about watercolour is just how it intermingles and makes these really unique patterns that you just can't even hope to reproduce again. You can see on the edge there I've got a bit of a cauliflower thing going on. I think that's just where the paper's curled up a bit and whatnot, but that's fine. Like um, It's actually going to lend itself really nicely to the kind of rough surface of the stonework anyway, so... This technique is not about being precious, it's about slapping some paper paint around and seeing what happens. Um, that's what's fun about it. You can't entirely predict or control the results. So just let loose guys, just have fun with this. So the important thing is I have waited for that foreground element to completely dry before moving on to the background element. So you do need a degree of patience or a hairdryer, one or the other. In this case, I had patience. I went and made myself a cup of coffee and just relaxed for a minute and thought about what I was going to do next. So I am getting some cerulean blue pretty much done the sky there while it's still wet. I'm just getting some green from my St. Petersburg um, set. I love this green. It is literally just called green. And I'm also just blending in a bit of Indian yellow at the top there just to give the foliage a bit more life to it at the back. And as I'm coming down, I'm just ma making a darker and darker mixture of the green using more pigment and just you know making it look heavier and this just again gives a nice texture to the foliage. I don't want to get too fussy with it just because it's the background element and it's supposed to just be a bit out of focus really. 
The one thing I did think after doing this is that actually I probably should have been a bit lighter in the background just to give the the scene a bigger, like a more sense of depth because things in the background are a bit fainter and we if we emphasise that in our painting then um, that's really going to force the sense of depth that is kind of the point of the video. But <laughs> I only thought about that after I did it and I was like, oh yeah, probably should have kept it a bit fainter but that's fine I get carried away when I'm using colors I just want to like I just love it when they're really super bright and vibrant but that's fine but if you're going to try this maybe try like a really like quite faint background and that's really going to push your foreground item like way way more forward so now I am just painting that bottom kind of corner I'm keeping it fairly simple again because I don't want to get too fussy with the background so I'm just painting it as kind of like a wall basically which is a little bit different to the photograph but that's fine. The focus is all on the sort of dragon monument statue thing in the foreground so I'm just taking a bit of uh, Payne's grey and then mixing in a bit of yellow ochre just you know letting them blend together but also making sure they don't completely mix otherwise it's just going to make a bit of mud but I'm um, just trying to evenly kind of not evenly but just in a controlled way just try and do a bit of wet and wet with them so they blend a little but not entirely i'm going to let this part dry as well i i didn't mention it before but i did let that foliage dry before i added the wall um, or at least the the green that's touching it you can see the green on the left hand side is still quite wet there but i'm not painting anything that's touching it so it's fine Again, you can see on the left of the wall, it's still a bit wet, but I'm not painting anything near it or drawing anything near it, so it's fine. Now it is time to um, draw over the top. So I'm using this Unipin fine liner. It's a 0.2 and it's got waterproof ink in it, so it's perfect for this kind of thing. I'm just drawing directly in ink. I'm just really trying to look at my photograph. And something I think I picked up from uh, listening to an interview with Roisin Cure is that when you're drawing directly in ink, you know, just putting little markers here and there or just putting like a few little tentative lines, you know, just so you can sort of see where you're going. And actually, even if you restate those lines or if they're in a slightly wrong place and restate them, generally speaking, you know, the, your watercolour is going to kind of mask over it a bit or divert the attention away from any wrong lines and luckily when drawing this kind of scene where it's like stones and it's old and whatnot you can get away with a lot so it's quite fun just to draw directly in pen and just really go for it you know just try and put little marks in just to find out where objects are in comparison to other objects but otherwise you know just go for it and uh, don't worry if you make some wrong lines you can either correct them and restate them and divert attention when you go back and paint the next layer um, or you just leave it you know quite it's quite nice sometimes seeing some structural lines that aren't quite in the right place just do them lightly and um, you know don't worry about it too much so I have gone a bit different from what is in the photograph in terms of the stones that's on here but you know I don't want to labor the point really too much as long as you're getting the idea of the stones like I don't think you really need to try and draw exactly what's in the photograph. The point of this technique aside from waiting for watercolor to dry is to kind of be loose-ish and quick-ish. So you know if I was actually sitting in front of Chichen Itza or sitting in Chichen Itza looking at this like I was when I drew it for my book it was really hot so um, this technique wouldn't be too much of a problem because the paint just dries far too quickly anyway in fact the trying to work wet and wet in a really hot climate can be tricky because you have to work you're against the clock because the paint is just drying so quickly so um yeah always fun um so yeah I'm just going in with a 0 0.7 or I have just gone in with a 0 0.7 should I say and just darkened a few lines and in the way I do this is I just really squint at my scene or in this case the photograph and just really see where those blackest blacks are and the thickest blacks and it's like really nice way of just pulling out some emphasis um, so yeah I've just gone in with a thicker line exactly the same pen uni pin but just a 0 0.7 instead and now I'm going in for the, the final layer of watercolour. So just to really bring out the shadows and a bit more emphasis in this foreground element, I'm going in with my Rosemary & Co Travel Dagger Brush. So it's a smaller version of the dagger brush I was using earlier. And it's, you know, it's really 
it's got that fine point on it so it can really kind of get into areas and for this size of sketchbook and the things that I'm painting here it's quite it's quite handy and you can also achieve like some interesting kind of technique um, textures and stuff like that with it so at this point I don't really know what I'm doing I'm not really sure what texture I'm going for on these stones I'm just sort of trying things and seeing where it's going um, just kind of focusing my efforts on getting a bit of shade and a bit of light really but it, uh, there's not too much shadow light on shadow on the front of this kind of stone statue thing so to some degree I am overemphasizing slash uh, making things up a little bit just to make it a bit more dynamic but seeing as I've already painted it in pinks yellows and Payne's grey um, you know I think you can tell we're not going for realism here so that's fine the more important thing to me here is just to make it look really quite interesting, you know, and work with the the wash that's already down. And, you know, I don't want to like kind of cover it up. It's it's going to shine through because it's transparent watercolour anyway. So it's quite nice. It gives it a bit of warmth behind it. But yeah, I don't want to just go in and sort of like cover everything up. So I'm just trying to work with the colours that are already there on the different stones that I've got and to see what happens really. It is, it's definitely a bit of an experiment. Um, this is not the way I sketched this when I was actually in front of it. And that was a good few years ago. That was back in 2017, almost when I kind of really started travel sketching really hardcore kind of thing. So um, yeah, I think looking at this sketch versus the one that's in my book, I can really obviously see like quite a lot of uh, progress, which is nice. So yeah, if any of you have got the book, you'll see what I mean. But so this is not the same technique. So this definitely is a kind of experiment really that I'm doing on camera, but it's one that I kind of knew that would, would work really. And that yeah, you guys would have fun with uh, using yourself. Um, so the lighting has changed a little bit here. So sorry about that, but it's kind of got a bit darker outside. So, and I really want to carry on doing this, this uh, sketch because it's fun. So I think all in all this maybe took me like 45 minutes, but that was including kind of waiting for paint to dry and stuff. So um, it is pretty a pretty quick uh, way of doing things. And as described, uh, or as discussed, if you know you're in a hotter climate, it's gonna the paint's gonna dry reasonably quick. Or you know if you're at home, you can um, get a hairdryer or whatever out. Just uh, don't hold it too close to your to your painting. Don't don't burn the paper or anything. Um, so now I've got the 0.7 back out. And I'm just sort of re-emphasising a few bits and bobs, just really trying to bring out some of the stones and just really give it a bit of pop. So yeah, that's if you're if you're feeling your your sketch is looking a bit flat, definitely one way of bringing a few bits forward is getting a a thicker pen or creating a thicker line around certain bits. And now I've gone for the white gel pen because I can see there's a bit of light shining on the background, a bit of stone, and I was just trying to see if I could capture that kind of a bit of a glow really just to really again separate out the foreground statue um, from the background elements. So what I'm going for here is the the stone um, monument is like fully in focus imagine we're a photographer and that the background is all blurred out that's kind of the uh, the idea. So minimal detail in the background again when you're doing this try and do it maybe even like lighter colors just a really pull that uh, foreground monument or whatever you're painting, that foreground element forward. So that's it from me today, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do take this and run with it. Go and experiment with it in your sketchbooks. And if you're on Instagram, then um, tag me so I can see Urban Sketching World. Do check out the blog as well. I've got over 70 articles over there covering all kinds of things to do with urban sketching. Um, so you can check that out at urbansketchingworld.com and of course you can check out my book if you so wish and I also have a full length online course of several hours um, teaching you travel sketching in ink and watercolour so do check that out as well. All of the information is in the video description below otherwise I will see you guys in the next video.